A few days ago, I shared 10 of my favorite CSS techniques, and you guys responded with nearly a thousand comments of your own pro tips. Tips that are so good that they deserve their own video. The first one from Skylark Murphy is really simple yet really powerful. Basically, it boils down to use relative units when possible over static pixel values. For example, when designing a responsive layout, you might have headings or containers with fixed pixel values for margin and padding. Then you might have a media query to change those values on smaller screens. Not only is this difficult to maintain, but it doesn't work very well on devices that scale fonts automatically. Instead of fixed units like pixels, we can use relative units like M or Rem. M will calculate the size automatically based on the font size of its nearest parent. If the parent has a font size of 16 pixels, then 2M would compute to 32 pixels. As an alternative, you could use Rem, which is relative to the root font size. I generally find that one more useful when working with margin and padding. But most importantly, notice how that got rid of the media query. And and one thing I'll add is that there are more relative units than just M and Rem, one of which is CH, or character width. Now, if you're really serious about design, you may have read The Elements of Typographic Style by Robert Bringhurst, which says that the optimal size for a paragraph is between 45 and 75 characters. A cool trick is that we can enforce that rule using the clamp function I showed you in the previous video. Use it to make the min width 45 characters, the preferred width 50%, and the max width 75 characters. And now every paragraph will be the absolute perfect width. Now our next tip is also very simple, but also one that will change your life. Demetra says to use HSL colors over hex or RGB. RGB stands for red, green, blue, where each mix of the color can be a value from 0 to 255. Hexadecimal contains the same information, but in a more compact format that's even harder to interpret. HSL, on the other hand, stands for hue, saturation, and lightness. And that format makes it way easier to compute a nice looking color palette. If you have a hex color in VS Code, go ahead and hover over it, then click on the top to bring up HSL mode. On the right, you'll notice we have our hue control, which controls the color itself. Then on the main box, if you move from left to right, it will control the saturation or intensity of the color. And if you move up and down, it will control the lightness or brightness of it. And optionally, you can add a fourth value for opacity. What's really cool though, is if you want to make a color palette quickly, you can simply choose a saturation and lightness, then increment the hue by a certain amount, like 25 in this case. And now we have a bunch of colors that look like they belong together. And that brings us to our third tip from N Sharma. An issue I often see on websites that have a fixed nav bar is that when you go to an anchor link, the page will automatically scroll, but then the heading is covered by the fixed nav bar. It turns out there's an obscure property called scroll padding top, or just scroll padding for all the other sides, which will add additional padding when the browser automatically scrolls to that anchor. And that gives us an easy way to fix a very common yet very annoying bug. If you saw your comment in this video, hit me up via email or Slack because you just won yourself a free t-shirt. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.